In this video, we will show you how to replace your rear axle seal. Let's get started. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing you need to do is make your way in the trunk and turn off your air ride suspension. The next thing that you'll want to do is safely raise and support the rear of the vehicle so the wheels are off the ground. Continue on to removing your center cover. After you have that off of there, remove all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. The next thing that you want to do is make sure you apply a little bit of support underneath your rear differential. Now that we have the wheel off of there, the next thing you want to do is carefully push back the caliper piston. We'll use a small prying device, get inside this area, and gently pull back on the caliper. Once you have a little bit of movement from this area, continue on along the back side. You'll find that you have two 10 millimeter headed slider bolts. Remove the pair and then remove the caliper from the area and inspect the brake pads. Inspect your hardware, replace it as necessary. Now from outside the caliper, we're gonna find the outside brake pad. You'll find that you have this tab that you can gently press down and roll the caliper off of the area. Once they're off of there, inspect your brake pads. Make sure it doesn't look like they're worn or damaged in any way. Let's set this aside, putting no pressure on the flex hose. The next thing that we will do is remove the rotor from the area. If you find that it's stuck on here or it doesn't want to pull off of the emergency brake shoes located inside, on the back there's an adjustment that you can remove a boot and then use a pry bar to slowly turn the adjustment point until you can release the rotor from the area. We'll give that a quick inspection and set it aside. Now at this point, you'd want to give the emergency brake shoes a quick inspection. As you can tell, ours are pretty worn. I'm going to be replacing these off camera. Now once you've given these an inspection, continue on underneath the rear of the vehicle at the rear differential cover. Before you remove your rear differential cover, you need to come along the driver's side forward aspect of the differential and remove the fill plug. For this, we'll use a 3 8 drive extension on a ratchet. Once you have the plug out of there, have a quick look at it. On the end of the differential plug, there's a magnet. You might find that it has a little bit of metal fragments on it. Tiny particles are okay. If you see any large chunks, that means you could have an issue with the rear differential itself. Go ahead and wipe this down, clean the threaded area, give it a quick inspection, and set it aside. Now along the back side of the differential, you can see that you have your differential cover. Go ahead and clean down the area. If you have any mess that looks like this, make sure you put a collection bucket under here before you clean it, and especially before you start removing the cover from the differential. Once you're sure that there's no way for any debris to make its way inside of the differential, we can start removing the cover. You'll find that you have several 13 millimeter headed bolts that make their way around the cover. You also want to pay attention along the top of the cover. There's going to be a bracket up there. So keep that in mind. Along the cover, you might also find that you have a metal tag on one of the mounting bolts. That tag doesn't necessarily need to go anywhere in particular but it does have to make its way back onto the differential during the installation. At this point, we can continue on removing those bolts. Start with the center up along the top. We'll fully remove this bolt, give it a quick inspection, and start it back in just a couple threads, leaving it in while we continue removing all of the rest. Once you remove that, keep in mind there won't be anything holding this up against the differential, so fluid could make its way out. Make sure you have your collection bucket under the area still.
There's my bolt with my tag. The next thing you want to do is use a small pry bar and carefully pry the differential cover off of the differential. Continue on by holding that pan, remove your center bolt, remove the bracket from the back side of the pan, and then remove the pan from the differential. We'll set that aside. The next thing you will want to do is put your vehicle in neutral. You can continue on by turning your drive shaft until you can gain access to this mounting bolt right here. You're going to have to remove this using an eight millimeter. That bolt comes all the way through this pin right here. Now, when you remove this, make sure you're holding on to this pin. You don't want it to fall down and potentially get damaged by hitting the floor or ground. We we'll use our eight millimeter to start loosening this. Once you have it loose enough, we'll continue on by removing that bolt while holding the pin. There's that mounting bolt. Give it a quick inspection. Now we'll carefully start removing this. I'll press along the top to slide it out of position. Go ahead and clean that up and give it a quick inspection as well. When we're inspecting it, we're trying to see if it looks like it's cracked or damaged in any way. This one doesn't look bad at all, we'll set it aside. The next thing that we will want to do is make our way behind the backing plate to the ABS sensor. You'll find that you have one 10 millimeter headed bolt holding the sensor in place. Remove the bolt and then carefully remove the sensor from the backing plate. Once you get the bolt out of there, continue on by pulling out the ABS sensor approximately a finger's width away. Once you have the ABS sensor pushed inboard, continue on out at the axle. We're gonna grab onto this and push it towards the center of the vehicle. Once you have that pressed in, make your way back over to the differential. Inside of the differential, you're looking for this little C-clamp right here. We just wanna go ahead and pop that right off of the axle. Typically, it just falls down into the differential you can grab it out of there, clean it, inspect it, set it aside. There we go. Now we can make our way back out here to where the axle is. Make sure you put a collection bucket underneath this area because as you pull out the axle, you might find there's differential fluid in this area. With the axle out of the way, we can continue on to removing the axle seal from the area. For this, I'll use a pry bar. Carefully get in behind the axle seal and gently prying it out, being careful not to damage my emergency brake shoes or the axle tube. You can also try using a seal puller. There it is, friends. Once the seal's out of there, it's a good idea to clean down the differential tube and inspect it. You wanna make sure that there's no gear oil or debris in this area. Now let's prepare our brand new axle seal for installation. Have a look at the back side of the seal. You'll find that you have a small spring that makes its way all the way around the black rubber part of the seal. Use a little bit of petroleum jelly in this area. Once you've lubricated around that spring, continue on along the inside of the seal where the axle will ride as well. Once you've coated that area with the petroleum jelly, continue on along this area. This is going to be the area that's directly up against the differential tube, so you need to make sure you have a sealant making its way all the way around. We'll use a little bit of RTV or gasket maker. Just make sure that it's oil resistant. Put a little bead going around, and now we can continue on by installing this into the differential. Let's take this and line it up in position. 
Now we'll continue on with a seal driver. You wanna make sure you have one that's the proper size that fits over the entire seal. We'll push this up against here, and now we can start driving this into the differential, paying attention for an audible difference in sound. Right there, I could hear a difference in sound. Give it a couple more taps just to drive it in a little further. Clean down any of the existing residue. Now let's continue on to using a little bit of 8090 gear oil. We want to come right inside this area, spraying directly onto the bearings themselves, and then we'll work it around. The next thing that you will want to do is clean and inspect the end of the axle where your bearing and seal need to go. You want to make sure it's clean and free of any debris and or damage. Anything like that could potentially cause issue to the seal or even the bearings. Now we can carefully slide our axle into the differential. Now what you're going to find is it only really goes in so far before you have to try to shake it up and down and left and right to try to get it lined up inside of that differential in the center there. As you slide it in, you might notice that it seems like it gets a little caught. You can try twisting it a little bit one direction or the other, but you don't want to go very far because we don't want to turn any of the gears inside of the differential. Let's make our way back over to the center of the differential. Locate the area that had that mounting bolt. We want to make sure that we clean the threaded area. I'll use a little bit of parts cleaner directly inside the hole and then some compressed air just to make sure that I blow it nice and dry. Let's continue on to that U-clip that goes directly on the end of that axle. Once you have the clip in there, continue on to pulling the axle back away from the inside of the differential. Let's continue on to this piece. You'll find on one side of it, you have the mounting hole for that mounting bolt to go through. Go ahead and slide this through, aligning the holes for the mounting bolt. After that, we'll continue on with the mounting bolt. You'll notice that I applied a thin amount of blue thread locker. Never use red thread locker on this. That lined up. Start that in by hand and then snug it up. You want to make sure that this is nice and tight so there's no way that it can loosen up on you while you're driving down the road. So right there it bottomed out. I'll continue on by holding the drive shaft so this can't spin and just make sure it's nice and tight. The next thing that we will want to do is cover up as much of the internals of the differential as possible. Once you have that covered, continue on with a flat blade razor or a scraper and clean down the differential where your pan is going to sit. We'll use a rag and wipe this down afterward. Give it a quick inspection. Make sure you don't see any debris in this area. You also want to make sure that it's clean and free of any of the differential oil. The next thing you'll want to do is clean up the mating surface of your differential pan and the threading on all of your mounting bolts. With all of that clean, continue on with some gasket maker. You're going to go around the entire mating surface of the differential cover. Make a nice bead all the way around. Once you've done that, take a gloved finger and smooth it out. Let's get back over to the vehicle. Let's install that differential cover onto the differential. Start in a couple of the mounting bolts to hold it in place. Do a couple down low. Once you have a couple down here, we'll move up to the top, install that bracket, and then put in the mounting bolts up there as well. As we install these bolts, keep in mind, one of them has to have that little tag on it. It doesn't matter which one. Since I got my tag from over here, I'll be putting it back where I got it from.
Once each of them are snug, we'll just go around one more time to make sure they're nice and tight. Perfect. All right, let's wipe this down. At this point, if you use the gasket maker, you wanna make sure that you let this dry before you continue on adding 80-90 gear oil to the differential. Push in your ABS sensor, line it up, put in the mounting bolt. Once it's snug, torque it to 62 inch pounds. The next thing you'll wanna do is make your way back out here. Pay attention to the end of the axle. You wanna make sure that it's clean and free from any debris. Now let's use some copper anti-seize on the mating surface. Now you're going to want to continue on to the back side of the rotor. Clean that mating surface as well. Install the brake rotor. Let's get ready to install our brake caliper. Pay attention to the slider. You want to make sure that you have that slid away from the brake pad. As we put this in position, we'll start rolling it in from the bottom first. Continue up to the top, pushing out that slider pin as well. Roll it in. Start in both of your slider pin bolts by hand, snug them up, and then torque each of these to 18 foot pounds. Let's reinstall our wheel. Start on all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts and then snug them up. Now let's make our way to the back of the backing plate. We're going to have to readjust the adjuster for the emergency brake shoes. When you do this, you need to be careful not to over adjust it, meaning you're pushing the shoes out too far up against the rotor. You only want them to barely touch up against the rotor so you can feel a tiny bit of drag. It should still spin. If you try to spin it and it only goes a little bit and then stops, you're going to have too much friction. You're going to have an overheating condition and you're going to cause some damage. Let's just go ahead and adjust this. An easy way to test it once you've made the adjustment is to make your way inside the vehicle and test the emergency brake functionality. Once you feel as though you have it adjusted properly, continue on with your protective plug. Once you're sure that the differential pan gasket is dry, Continue on by filling the rear differential with 80-90 gear oil. As we're filling this, we want to wait until we see a slow trickle of fluid coming out of the fill plug. All right, at this point, I have a slow trickle of fluid coming out of this area. Temporarily put in your rear differential plug. After that, we'll get this down closer to the ground we're going to have to tip the differential towards the side that we just replaced our parts. With the differential tipped, you want to leave it like this for a couple minutes. Now, once you've let it sit for approximately two minutes, go ahead and level out that rear differential again and recheck the rear differential fluid. Add as needed. Okay, now that we've tipped the differential, let's make our way back over here, remove the fill plug, and double check that fluid level. Now we can continue filling it until it just barely starts trickling out of there again. Reinstall your fill plug. Make sure it's nice and tight. Clean your mass. Now let's get the wheel safely back down on the ground. We can torque each of these 21 millimeter lug nuts to 100 foot pounds in a crisscross manner.
If you have a center cover, put that on now. Let's make our way back into the trunk and turn on the air suspension. Okay friends, we've got the car back together. We showed you how to do one side of the vehicle. The process will be the exact same thing for either side. Aside from that, take your vehicle for a road test. Make sure you don't hear any funny noises and get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Aside from that, thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.